I've just written an op-ed piece for the New York Times with Robert McNamara, who was Kennedy's Secretary of Defense, about the fact that New York, according to your Federal Emergency Management Agency, right now has 40 hydrogen bombs targeted on it. He's the one man in this country or the world who really understands nuclear war, because he was with Kennedy during the Cuban Missile Crisis. He said, Helen, you can't believe how close we got. And the fact that none of you virtually know that, that we're all still on hair trigger alert, that tonight, by accident, we could all be annihilated. Temperature at Hypo Center exceeded 6,000 degrees Celsius. Struggling through crowds of moaning dead. Mesmerized faces tilt back as the great cloud becomes an umbrella. The sacrifices that they had to make to open this park, even while most of them are still living in shacks, is absolutely incredible. When I made my second visit to Hiroshima, in 1981, it had been 37 years since my first visit in 1954. One day, while walking through the park, a sweeper came into the circle, an old Japanese woman with a wooden broom sweeping the cherry blossoms and the pieces of tissue out of the area around the statue. And she read the memorial and looked at me and I looked at her and then she went about her business and I thought what's her life been like? Why is she alone sweeping in this park? What does she think about Americans coming to visit this place of peace? Etched on a dark granite wall. The instant of atomic disintegration. Fumiko stands to fight through crowds of mourning dead. She holds a dead, blackened girl whose blistered mouth is locked in one long howl. Broken lines of charred sticks, smoldering, their eyes raw, simmering pits. I, my girls, my girls, she screams at the black sky, Amy Cole, Mako. In May of 1993, I was uh, traveling from Yokohama to Hiroshima on the bullet train. Noticed a man looked to be late 60s, maybe in his 70s. I noticed him as not because he was dressed so differently than anybody else, but because he actually looked at me. Later on that same afternoon, I went to the Peace Park, and one of the places I went was the uh, the Atomic Memorial Mound, oval, perhaps 25, 30 yards across. And what that mound contains is the, uh, are the ashes of the people who were killed in the August 6th blast, but who were so badly burned that they could not be identified. But I felt uh, uncomfortable. So I, as soon as possible, I left and it was raining pretty hard and rather than looking at any more monuments, I went over to the, uh, the Hondori Mall. After a few minutes of my sitting there sipping on a cup of hot chocolate, this man came up behind me and excused himself and engaged me in conversation and it was the same man. He blinked once and focused on his gnarled hands, which he'd locked together in front of him. Most important was wife and daughter. I could never find their bodies. Excuse me? Maybe their ashes sleep in Atomic Mound. These people who have ever had every reason in the world to hate and perhaps thirst for vengeance build a park on forgiveness acceptance, tolerance, brotherhood, hope for peace. I took seven teenagers and they were very bad up until I took them to the peace park that day. That's and they were, true. yeah, <laughs> they were silent for a whole day. They're complaining about the hotel room and the meals and everything. But then we t went to the park, they were silent, you know, and it's this incredible sense of solemnness.
Nothing is given back. All has changed. Forever changed. In the vitally important precaution of dusting each other off, the lowly broom becomes an item of military significance. Next, Geiger counters are used to check the troops for signs of radioactivity. Marching out of the shadow of the awesome fighting men, symbolizing America's determination to keep strong in a restless world. I didn't get diagnosed for multiple myeloma until the uh, summer of 2002. I was playing racquetball at the community center, and uh, as most of you know, that's a fairly uh, kind, of, kind of a contact sport. And I broke a rib bouncing off a wall. I didn't think I had bounced that hard, and I'd certainly taken a lot of harder hits in the years I've been playing racquetball. Six weeks later, my wife and I were traveling in southern France, and I turned around to pick up a, something off of a suitcase in the back seat, and just the process of turning around, broke another rib. And uh, I finally had to admit what my wife was telling me for a long time, that I was sick. And so I was just thinking, okay, I'm just going to stay home. I'm going to have, you know, six months, if I'm lucky, a year uh, left. And uh, at least I'm surrounded by friends and people I've known forever. And I've got, you know, connected here and connected there. And, uh, and I have a good support system. So I'll just stay here and be comfortable rather than going off to Mayo Clinic for three months for something that could kill me. The cracked world has blown away. I couldn't think of anything to do to take arms against the sea of troubles. I almost gave up with him, I think. Mm -hmm. But but Rad persisted and, and he keeps a lot to himself. So when he was in his real depths, I sometimes didn't know it. I was sitting at, up there at my desk one day looking out the window after about three inches of fresh snow, this is in December, looking at some ski tracks that had gone down the street and feeling pretty sorry for myself because I love to cross-country ski as well as downhill. And uh, Miles Davis, kind of blue, is playing in the background. And all of a sudden, I am sit here and I feel my shoulders moving. And I kind of ignore it, and I'm still trying to write. And, you know, all of a sudden I can feel it in my back, and I realize that my body that I thought was totally closed down was responding to Miles Davis. Hope. No more that yearning born of desperation. My heart. And the next day, I called Mayo Clinic and said, I'm coming in for that stem cell transplant. About face, turn from the fireball, turn and leave the trench. Being a caregiver is a major, uh, major chore. I wasn't always good at it, but I tried to do my best. Sometimes I was pretty grouchy yeah, that's understandable. Uh, or, or scared it's a hard uh, it's Most, a hard chance. mostly scared